Greetings, Indianapolis. It's great to see you again. I was uh, about a year ago. I went to a networking event uh, for innovation-minded professionals, and it was mostly business types at the event. It was a corporate speaker talking about how to build an innovation culture within your organization. But as I was looking through the registration list, I noticed that there was a particular gal on the list that stuck out. Her name was Beth, and she was from the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. And I, that struck me. I mean, what's she doing at a business event? So I went and I found her in the crowd and introduced myself. And before we could even exchange pleasantries, I couldn't help but interrupt her and said, all right, I got to ask, what's a person like you doing at an event like this? Her response was brilliant. She said, Doug, the symphony has been offering a product that in some cases has remained unchanged for 100 years or more. If we're going to be innovative, we've got to find some inspiration outside of our industry. I mean, inspiration, that's what we're here to, today to get. I mean, the theme of this conference is, is mix it up. And so she recognized that if she wanted to find inspiration and to actually do something different, she had to find people who were not thinking the same way as she was. You see, she recognized that there's a problem with the way we build our networks. When we build our networks, we tend to really focus on what we have in common with people. For example, there's people that are in my trade and people outside my trade. The people inside my trade, I understand how they tick. We have the same educational background. We work on the same types of work. We speak the same language. The people outside my trade, well, they, they may not necessarily understand. And so I'll focus most of my time and energy networking with those people that are in my trade. Same thing with big organizations. People that are in organizations tend to focus on other people that are in their organizations when they're building their networks. It's, very, it's easy, right? I mean, we work for the, we're working toward the same mission statement. We have the same leadership. We're working within the same constraints toward the same goals. The people outside my organization, uh, well, we start to get into issues with NDAs or trade secrets or you know what, the odds are they don't care about what I'm doing. And so again, we tend to focus our networking when people with whom we have a lot in common. So if you lay these two distinctions on top of each other, you have a grid that you can start to populate and map out where most of our networks lie. For example, I mean, we've got our coworkers. These are people we have virtually everything in common with. Same trade, same discipline, same organization. We work on the daily grind with these folks every single day. And in some organizations, we have the opportunity to work with people from other trades, other disciplines. And so we can get some cross-functional exposure where we can start to get other perspectives on the work we're working on. And then when we get outside of our organizations, there's a ton of different trade organizations and conferences where we can go and get outside perspectives. But again, we tend to focus our energy on outside organizations with people that share the same trade as us. And so I've actually taken to calling this our work sphere. I mean, this is, this is for many people, this is their world. This is their network. This is who we tend to invest our time in. And you know what? There, there's no problem with that, right? I mean, there's a ton of benefit to be gained from having a lot of good, solid connections within these three quadrants. But as Christian was saying earlier, we have, a, we have a tendency as kids to get excited and to be creative, have a sense of wonder. As an adult, we can tend to fall into a category where we get so self-important that we don't concern ourselves with anybody that falls outside of our work sphere. So that's why I was so excited when I saw that Beth was looking to this fourth quadrant for inspiration. I've actually taken to calling these people strangers because, number one, I couldn't come up with a better name, and because, number two, you can't really define these folks other than they're different from me. We have very little in common. Now, what Beth had recognized was that when she was out looking for inspiration, looking for the next new great thing, it was these others or these strangers that were going to provide that inspiration. You see, when you're connecting with your coworkers, you work on so much of the same things. You get so close to projects that you can tend to have too much in common, too much similarity in order to find breakthrough new inspiration. Again, if you're talking with people in your organization from different trades, it's great to get the different perspectives, and you can execute big, hairy problems like nobody's business. But when you're looking for inspiration, there's a lot of shared baggage within an organization. You know, that, we tried that and it failed. You know what? We don't do things that way. There's politics that come into play, and so it can be a difficult place to find truly new ideas that are outside of the realm of that organization. So let's go outside of our organization. Let's try to find inspiration from the trade organizations, the outside groups in which we're involved. But here's the problem. To an accountant, everything can be solved with a spreadsheet. You see, we tend to prescribe the same types of approaches to problems as our peers in our same industry do. 
And so if we go to our trade associations, again, we're going to get similar perspectives to the ones we already have. So these strangers may be our best bet, our best source of new inspiration if we really do want to think in a new way and try to do something completely new that's never been done before. So if you're going to meet with these strangers, there's four things you have to do to create successful connections. First thing you have to do is you have to meet. And I'm talking to my fellow introverts here in the back row. You've got to get out there and you've got to get to events like this where you're going to meet with people that aren't necessarily aligned with your organization, that you don't know in advance have something to benefit, with, benefit you with. And you've got, to make a ch you've got to make the opportunity to get out of your comfort zone and connect with these people. Second thing you have to do is listen. You see, when you're talking with, with people that you have a lot in common with, it's awfully easy to finish, finish their sentences and to be thinking way ahead of them. I mean, just imagine if people could hear what was going on inside your head in a conversation with a peer, right? You just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Tim's over there. I wish I was talking to Tim. <laughs> so you've got to actively listen to strangers in order to get the wisdom they have to offer. Then you have to adapt it. You see, a lot of people try to full, wholesale adopt what somebody else has to offer. Okay, I'll do what they do, I'll apply it to my situation, oh, it doesn't work, eh, I'll throw it out. Well, there's principles that made them successful. And if you can figure out how to extract those principles from what made them successful and apply it to your situation, that's where you're going to find your point of inspiration. You see, when an idea that is native to a stranger connects with an idea that is native to you, that's the moment of inspiration. At that moment, you have the opportunity to see something that you already knew in a brand new light. And the last thing you have to do is apply it. Inspiration by itself is worth nothing. You've got to figure out how to turn that inspiration into value. So I'm a firm believer that Beth was, Beth was spot on with her answer with coming to that event, looking to strangers for her source of inspiration. And if, if the symphony's performance and their involvement in this event is any clue at all, I think that she's done a good job and I think that she's in the right place. So I would encourage you, get out there, meet a stranger, listen to what they have to say, adapt the principles that have made them successful to your situation, and then apply it until you have your breakthrough. Thank you very much.